It's Justice Thursdays. And so we're going to have a Justice Thursday conversation. We're joined by two officers of the court. One is the Honorable Esther Kimilu and the other one is the Honorable Martha Nanzushi, both from the traffic court in Milimani, Nairobi. Good morning, ladies. Good morning. Good morning. Karibu Nisan, and thank you very much for joining us this morning. Uh, we're going to have a justice conversation around matters of traffic. And as we do that, both of you know Sarit, Sarit Center. Yes. In Westlands. Yes. yes. Mm -hmm. How long has Sarit Center been in existence? If you're just to take a guess, Esther. Mm, maybe 20 years. 20? Okay, that's mm -hmm. a good one. Uh -huh. Martha? I'll give it more than 20 years. About 25? 25. 25. Yeah. Okay. <laughs> All right. I'll City? Mm hmm now that we're talking about sorry your city <laughs> why don't you give uh two guests the day's proverb yes our proverbs for the whole of this week come from the country of malawi mm -hmm. uh, whose capital is i don't know blanta lilongo <coughs> one is the commercial capital the other one is the administrative capital yes uh -huh. ladies you know which is which i am not certain <laughs> it is okay not to be certain yes you're also not certain but i can make a wild guess mm, yes lilongwe is the capital is it administrative or is it commercial, commercial. lilongwe is commercial blanta is, is uh, administrative it's the other way around yes <laughs> <laughs> yes so if it was out of 100 you'd have gotten 50. <laughs> you're half right i'm half right <laughs> As if it weren't bad enough to fall, the ladder lands on top of you. As if it weren't bad enough to fall, the ladder lands on top of you. Mm. Hey, this one. Honorable Nanzushi, what do you make of this proverb? What are the Malawians saying? What's your interpretation of it? Double tragedy. <laughs> mm -hmm. <laughs> Very well put. Yeah. Double tragedy. How about you, Honorable Camille? Mm, luck might be once, but not twice. <laughs> My guess. Uh -huh. Yeah. You, you may get lucky once. Yeah. But chances of getting lucky twice. Yes. <laughs> <laughs> Limited. <laughs> Let's talk about the traffic court because both of you are from the traffic court in Kilimani. I don't know who goes first. Just give us an introduction of what is a traffic court. Okay. A traffic court is um, a court established to deal with uh, matters traffic. <coughs> matters traffic range from roadsides, along the roads, and anywhere where a motorist is involved, even outside the roads, mm -hmm. in estates, and uh, all over the place so long as it's involving vehicles bicycles even hard cuts it's a traffic issue okay. even mkokoteni case is a traffic co case mkokoteni case is a traffic case uh, they okay. use the road they use the public they roads. are on the roads oh yes. so does that therefore mean that if i trip and fall on, and the, on road. the road it's a traffic case you are not motorized we're talking about anything that is motorized or an object that is moving. Me mechanically motorized. Me yes, mechanically motorized. Okay, Mkokoten isn't mechanically motorized. <laughs> it is. It uses human energy. It uses human it, energy. In the absence of that human being pulling it or pushing it, that thing won't move. <laughs> it has wheels. It has wheels. Yes. It is a wheeler. Mm -hmm. But mm -hmm. using human energy. You know, I'm going to be difficult on this one because. <laughs> Deliberately. <laughs> I, I have feet. Okay. Helps with my locomotion. So yes. you're a pedestrian. You're I'm, a pedestrian. I'm a pedestrian. And something yes. happens to you I'm on the road. I'm a mobile being. Yes. Something happens to me on the road. Yes. 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 It's not traffic. The one that does not involve the motorized um, items mm. wouldn't be traffic. You can fall on the road. So if two pedestrians, for example, knock each other on the road it's and one falls. It's not traffic. You can't <laughs> take them to the traffic. No, it is just human <laughs> accident or they were fighting. <laughs> or right. we, it is another situation. Right. Not really traffic. Okay. Yes. So who brings cases to the traffic court? 
we we receive cases by the direct from the director of public prosecutions mm. it's the dpp who institutes all cases 99% of the cases mm. that come to courts are instituted by the dpp apart from maybe the 1% that we have the the private prosecution but in traffic cases the institutor is the director of public prosecutions which means that all traffic offenses are criminal offenses all traffic cases are criminal in nature yes they are okay mm -hmm. Does that include insurance cases or are those not traffic cases? Insurance cases are civil in nature. Those are, those are uh, civil claims. Mm -hmm. So those are addressed by the civil courts, not the traffic courts. Okay. Maybe in addition, mm -hmm. I can say that uh, if you contravene any law of Kenya, you yes. are guided we are guided by the criminal procedure code okay and we have the penal code okay so if you drive without insurance that's a criminal offense mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. so you will come to a criminal court yes. a, a traffic court under to be guided by the criminal procedure it's code yani, you, uh, you drive without driving license it is criminal it's criminal i'm the same court as people who've shot other people killed people because those are also crimes same yes. court Yes, Except this one now, it's, it's because I didn't have... Hey, isn't that a bit harsh, surely? No, it isn't. Why? And, and that is why the, 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 the Chief Justice Emeritus Mutunga decided to now make it a bit softer that, okay, the traffic offenders, let us have a court for the traffic offenders. Let us not put them together with the, with the these, murders these and the, the robberies. Yes. And yes. Mm. Okay. That's how the traffic court came up. Okay, colour it a little bit for us so that we have some understanding of what then makes up a traffic offense we're saying now that it would be criminal obviously it's criminal in nature so maybe give us a few examples of what kind of cases then come to the court who's doing what who then is charging these individuals for having done what we have a traffic act we have insurance act we also have regulations and under the act various offenses have been stipulated mm -hmm. ranging from causing mm -hmm. death <coughs> by dangerous driving, mm -hmm. driving without due care, mm -hmm. causing obstruction, uh, dropping passengers at a place not designated as a bus stop, even failing to wash your car. A dirty car is a traffic yes. offense. Oh, and having torn seats is an offense. And, uh, yeah. And yes. even driving without your driving license, without your insurance, for public service, without wearing the blue uniform, for drivers, yeah. maroon uniform for conductors, yeah. and if the circle is as requested to be given a special uniform, failing to wear that special uniform requested by your Yeah, at this rate, you're going to tell me if my car is not fully paid for, I shouldn't be driving it. No. <laughs> yeah. You know, there are those offenses, like you've just started going there, Mark. There are those offenses, offenses yeah. that people don't consider offenses yes. right yes. and yes. i think it's important that today we then concentrate on those ones we all know if a yeah. police officer stops you and they ask you for a driving license if it's in not valid that's an offense if you don't have it with you is it an offense it's an offense right yes. you it should have failing to carry, failing to carry yes. a yes. driving license in a, is an offense, yes. it's an offense. failing to yes. display an insurance is an offense on the windscreen yes. is an offense even sure. if you had it, no. have it in your, Why in your pocket offenses and I have it, I just don't have it with me. But the, the law says that you must display it at a place where it's visible. But they does not say exactly that put it at your front windscreen. It visible. must be at a place visible. To who? The police officers. Because okay. they are not supposed to come into your car. They, they are supposed to see it while they inspect the vehicle round. Mm -mm. You, know, you are also supposed to display any other, like for... TLB, yeah. TLB, that is transport license, TVS, to tourist vehicle, you're supposed to display, display such that when you are on the road, mm. everybody is aware that this is a TVS, this is a PSV, and this is a private vehicle. And further to that, you're also <laughs> supposed to print address and contact of that TVS or public service. Write it out. On the At a place that we oh, can read you. that thing you write on the door. This yes. vehicle belongs to Eric Latif, P.O. Box, blah, 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 blah. Right. The tear weight is this. The so it is also, on, the yes. it is also an offense for capacity. failing to print that l the speed limit, that 8, that 80. 80 kph. And sticking it on the vehicle. Yes. yes, it is an offense. Okay. 
Hey. Okay. You also spoke about not having torn seats and then also failure to wash your vehicle. Yes. Are offences, yes. criminal offences. Yes. It is a traffic the, offense. the traffic act. So let's start with a, oh. with with a dirty vehicle. <laughs> mm. Okay. So what is the threshold of a clean vehicle and a dirty vehicle? If I'm brought before your court and I'm being charged with driving a dirty vehicle, what is dirty? Dirty is a vehicle that um, you've gone, you've driven through mud and it is splashed all over your vehicle and your number plate is obscured. That means in case of anything, the police cannot follow you. Nobody can track and get to see. The number plate is not visible. And then it is um, that vehicle that will make people turn in traffic. You know, actually, I th my understanding of that law is that you are causing discomfort or to other people. You, it's an ISO. Oh, okay. other so road the offense is on, other people on any to road. look at your car yes. and it's unpleasant to and, them. And, uh, but most especially, mm. that m pa at that point, your number plate is not visible. Okay. Number plates must be visible at all. So plate. a basic threshold there is the visibility of the number plate. Yes. That's the number one basic threshold. Yes, your number plate must because be visible. Because many roads in this country are not tarmacked yes okay mm -hmm. many people will drive on the not tarmacked road during rainy season mm -hmm. obviously mm -hmm. that car will be dirty there'll be a traffic police officer down the road who will then stop all the cars on that road and accuse all of you of driving dirty vehicles on the road if somebody is brought then before your court in such circumstances what do you use to determine the threshold of their guilt i mean is it just yeah 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 you're driving a car that has not been washed that's an offense but if you come to court and the charges are read to you and you plead guilty to driving a vehicle that is dirty then the court will proceed to convict wait during the rainy season even these delightfully tarmac roads of ours unfortunately the walkways tend to be muddy there's no cover road, there's nothing so when it rains the water that then gets to be domiciled on the road is muddy. So all you need is another vehicle to splash your vehicle. So if we leave standard group and we head towards GM, there are some policemen who I think live there. <laughs> 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 you will come across police officers, and I know they are traffic police officers. Now, if they were to stop me, and my car was fine when I came to work, but it got splashed as I left. When I come to court and you ask me to plead, what am I allowed to? Because, yes, it is dirty, but am I allowed to explain that, you know, this dirt, it's not as though it's been here for a week. This is what happened. Mm -hmm. Just now. Maybe yeah. that will take us to plea taking. Yeah. Okay. Yes. And uh, plea is, taking. What is plea taking? Plea taking is a procedure where a charge sheet, mm -hmm. you, you, the, the, the charge sheet has been drawn. Whatever they are accusing you of. Mm -hmm. The story is reduced into a charge sheet. Mm -hmm. And, of course, every offense must be defined by the law. So this offense is now defined by the law, mm. and they put particulars that you, Eric was found driving a, a dirty vehicle. Mm. And if you remember to, um, Michuki rules, yes, there was a regulation that every motor vehicle must have a small dustbin, mm. yeah. such that we do not have bed bags and other nuisance in the vehicle. Banana peels. Banana peels. Mm. That can even cause accident. Mm. And assuming that uh, you are going to work and you just brush off at that car, or even at the parking outside there, somebody doesn't wash their car. Then you just alight and you're rushing for work, then the, the, the car is dirty. The threshold, of course, will be common sense. Yeah. It is on a rain day. Yeah. Then you mitigate yeah. and say, Your Honor, my car is dirty because it was a rain day. Yeah. We have these sand harvesters who obsecure the number plate for a purpose. <laughs> Because we bridge this truck. Excess of weight. Yes, they they, uh, they obscure for a purpose. Yes. It is not really just um, as a police officer would just stop because your car is dusty. But we have people who will smear even um, uh, mud on the on the number plate and even address to obscure that. When you are stopping, they escape. Then when you are running after them, you are running after what? Mm. Because identification of motor vehicles in Kenya is only through number, number plate. plate. And that number plate must be placed mm. in a manner that it can be read. Mm. It is also an offense. 
for obscuring the number plate. plate. Uh, Look at it from the reverse. You are knocked on the road by a vehicle, but unfortunately, because of the condition of the vehicle, you are not able to clearly get the registration of that vehicle. Mm. How do you access your justice? Mm. Okay. Looking at the range of these offences <laughs> that, you know, that are then defined, I would assume then that the traffic court is one very, very busy court. Yes. Uh, so, like, through the day, these are cases, it, I don't, what we want to call quick adjudication cases, or are they cases that go over time? Because I can imagine obstruction, this is something, and somebody says, well, all right, if you're going to take me to court, let's go. In terms of dispensing of these cases, how... Do we see them going through the courts? The, these are very quick dispensing cases eh? mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. because in a, in, a, in a day we will have about a um, hundred pleas that come in. Out of this a hundred pleas, my colleague will talk about the notice to attend court. Right. Now, 80% are the notices the police give on the, on the road. Mm-hmm. 20% are the ones that now they are arrested and actually placed in custody and brought to court. And I will tell you that 99% of those who are arrested on the road come to court, plead guilty, and the matter is concluded. How is the matter concluded? You would what get you you pay a get fine, your fine or right. you're discharged with a warning, mm. or you're given a suspended sentence, you're warned, and they, they, they are processed through the system. Mm. Right. Yes. I want to Have you ever asked yourself why this mm-hmm. majority of the people who come to court just say guilty, 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 guilty? I think for like, do you ask yourself, I mean, why, why would somebody commit an offense? Then just come to court and accept, yeah, I'm guilty, and then um, you just find them and they go. The, the um, one thing I know, people don't like going to court. And for sure, procedures and technicalities Take of courts on. are in impediment, I mm. can say to they're, justice. They're, they're mm. tedious. They're tedious mm. because whatever you just have admitted on the road and uh, you have penalized, mm-hmm. it comes in a procedure. Yeah. Because our laws provide that. Mm. Police are enforcers and detectors of the offense. Even mm. civil person, even mm. yourself. Yeah. Yeah. But the charge sheet must come to court. The charges must come to court through the DPP. Mm-hmm. Okay. Because it's a person who is empowered mm. by the Constitution of Kenya to institute and terminate okay. any mm-hmm. offense. Mm-hmm. And therefore, because of the procedures, mm. you are arrested at eight, the police have drafted the charges, mm-hmm. yep. they have informed the DPP that we have arrested Esther along Mombasa Road for charges of causing obstruction. Mm-hmm. Yeah. Then the DPP will say, let me see the statements. Right. Yep. How did it occur? Mm. As they read through, time is still time. running, yes. and Esther time. is in waiting bay somewhere y- yes and esther was actually going to naivasha or nakuru exactly. or i was coming for this interview. Yeah. Coming to for yes. interview, i was coming yeah. for this interview mm. so now time is still lapsing mm. and uh, before they make the decision my day is already spent yeah. and that is now why during the emeritus justice mutunga we introduced the notice to attend court okay so in case you are somebody is arrested they are notified attend court on, on Monday, mm-hmm. or they even ask you, what day do you think mostly you are available? Oh. Because if you tell me to attend court on Friday, and Friday have other commitments, yeah. can you allow me to come on Monday? Monday. Monday. You can also get a, a cash bill mm. from police. Mm. They have a receipt. Yeah. So you can now pay a cash bill from the uh, in the respective police station. Mm. Of course, the cash bill and the notice to attend court will have the charges. Mm. So as you go away, you'll know on Monday I'm coming to take plea on this with a specified court and time. And um, as I said, court procedures are a bit tedious. Tedious. And uh, I would rather just... What about about instant justice? Eric told us a story of when he was on one of his many walkabouts. He was going to Arusha. And I don't know what he did. He tells us that maybe he was above the speed limit by one... Yeah, half. Nothing, you know, <laughs> you know very Speed minimal. Speed limit is 50. And he was at 52. You I see? drove past a bump. Of and course, the car accelerated. Exactly. Yes. On the road, Madam stopped him. Nendawapi, blah, blah, blah. Yeah. She removed a gadget. 
what you have done costs... He's a Tanzanian police officer. Tanzanian police officer. What you have done costs this amount. Mm -hmm. Pay on the spot. Pay money. Receipt. Carry on. Done. Yes. In Kenya, we have uh, instant fines. Mm -hmm. But uh, our biggest challenge is our laws. Litigation. Police will arrest you. Mm. Remember, the DPP must be informed. Yeah. So, how will the DPP be, the, the, b before we inform the DPP, now that causes delay. We are still, together with our stakeholders, we are working on that, mm. such that we on board. If you are arrested along Mombasa Road, instantly the police notifies the DPP. And DPP notifies mm. me, the court, uh, mm. because we have virtual courts. Yeah. yeah. And uh, I now find you where you are. Because only a court can Actually, impose only, fine in only Kenya. Only a court can impose a fine. Yes. Unless to that, Kenyan law. that payment to Kenyan law. is going to be called something else other than a fine. Mm. Another penalty. But Where? if it's a fine, then all the three, all the all the stakeholders, it has to go from the enforcer to the prosecutor to, to the, the court judicial justice. officer. Yes. Then back now to the to litigant, to the, to the and offender. you're told, okay, now because I can't, you can't be fined without the court listening to your mitigation. Right. Yeah. It is a rainy day. I am sorry. I was rushing to hospital. I have a patient in the car. Mm. So I may decide not to fine you to be lenient with you. Oh, to let it, you go. But it's only you who can and do that. I, I, it's only me who has that latitude of telling you, okay, don't repeat that offense. You mean the police person cannot tell me where? <laughs> don't do it again. Go. They, they don't have authority to do that. They can do, but yeah. when it comes to find the penalty, I, uh, it's the court yep. that has the discretion when it comes to the penalty. So police can forgive you. The police can they're forgive They're looking you. at this and they're enforcing and, and they understand. Yes. But the yes. police cannot tell you to a fine year 2000. Yeah, yes, the police oh, can, can tell you that. Yes, you're they fine. If, it it if may not can. be official. <laughs> you'll, be, you'll be buying breakfast for somebody <laughs> because you'll not get a you'll receipt. You'll not get a receipt for that. Let El Fukumi, you just. Tano. Shika Tano na Unisame. Then you have given somebody money for free. Whether demanded, it is you who has given money. <laughs> but but it, is, it is a project that yeah. we are all working on and we are really hoping that it's going to come through very soon. It's going to be very easy mm. to 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 everybody because probably if you're traveling and you don't really have time to go to court, you 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 mm. we, we we tried a Mostly pilot on these Kiambu things Road. happen. This, this is how it happens. Yes, you yes, are yes, traveling. Yes. You would yes. not, you want to avoid this inconvenience. Yes, you accept. I oversped. I had actually it escaped my mind or whatever. Oh yeah, my car is dirty because you know where I live. Yeah. I've just joined the highway. Surely. To work. <laughs> yes. I mean, this is what has happened. But let's discuss this after the break. 27 minutes to 8. This morning on this Justice Thursday, we're having a conversation about operations of the traffic court. And we are joined by two officers of that court, the Honorable Esther Kimilu and the Honorable Martha Nanzushi, our magistrates of the traffic court in Milimani, Nairobi. We are discussing that. Spice. Justice Thursday. We are talking about operations of the traffic court. We all know there are very, very many traffic offenses, ranging from the most obvious ones, to including oh, insurance, oh, driving license, oh, you don't have a number plate, oh, you have a fake number plate, all those ones, to the ones that we're being told today, driving a dirty car, driving a car with torn seats, <laughs> driving a car with no seat belts, all those ones, very many offenses. Now, the thing is, what people encounter on the road and that process of a uh, traffic offense has been committed on a road and the justice happens in a court and in between there's a prosecutor like you're explaining and many people just see that as an inconvenience yes it's a traffic offense yes i want to admit uh, guilt yes i'm willing to pay the penalty for it but the the inconvenience. the inconvenience of it mm -hmm. just like uh, uh honorable Ma esther you're saying you are traveling let's say you're traveling many kilometers out of town you are arrested you're coming from nairobi you're going to nakuru to eldred you're going to kitale or you're even going to turkana but you're arrested in naivasha <laughs> and you have to now deal with the traffic police officers at the Naira naivasha base the prosecutor in naivasha the judicial officer in Naivasha, even if you're given this notice to attend court, can you choose the court to go to? 
well uh, an offense is uh, uh, is uh, is dealt with within the jurisdiction where territorial jurisdiction where the offense was where the committed. offense occurred there is also that proposal amongst our stakeholders that uh, if i am a resident of mombasa and i'm i'm arrested along the expressway in nairobi can i be allowed to take plea in mombasa that is a topic of discussion but as it is now if you commit an offense in naivasha you are supposed to be handled no. by the court in naivasha so the, even a notice to attend court yes. basically tells you we can let you go yes with this notice go to turkana but on such and such a date come back to naivasha yes they can also only <laughs> that uh, I do, uh, people might not be aware you can take plea through a representative mm -hmm. so long as it is a plea of guilty like for example you can send to your lawyer mm. you can send a friend you can send whoever is nearby mm. like i'm traveling and uh offense has occurred in mombasa i really do not have to go back to mombasa i i can call a lawyer and tell them kindly represent me to court on this day and uh please enter a plea of guilty okay. the challenge with uh, the plea of uh, of otherwise mm. is that if you don't plead if you plead not guilty how will that representative be handled? handled so the only way is i'm sending somebody with a plea of guilt just the way the notice at the reverse outlines that you enter a plea of guilty then that person because of uh, because uh, a fine must be paid my representative will remain in court until i pay should be ready to pay the fine. judiciary we can uh, we have we don't receive cash. Mm -hmm. We only pay through the bank, mm -hmm. through the M-Pesa and through the bank. Once the plea is taken, we generate invoice for you. So using that invoice, whoever is in court on my behalf, they will now send me that invoice number. Mm -hmm. And even from Washington, Washington D.C., mm -hmm. I can pay the fine. Right. Yes. So then, is it, is it imaginable that the system would be circular in that and it... it just as saying, if it's something that's being discussed, mm -hmm. you're on the way to Mombasa. Yes. Uh, so you can actually get what maybe in some of the other nations is called a ticket. You get a ticket, mm -hmm. you, sh you can then, you know, log it in online and appear in whatever court. But because the system is digitized and everybody's working in tandem, it can show up in another court and I can show up with my ticket and say, look, here I am. I was, uh, um, I was charged somewhere in Naivasha but here I am in Mombasa and I can turn up at court is that something that you would want to see in the future whereby so that you don't have one court overburdened with so many things at the same time and people can go ahead on their business no, it's not like they killed anybody really absolutely that would be very very nice because people will access justice mm. from their point mm. the other challenge is plea taking virtual because if I take that plea of you in the house and I said, come on, you have to pay 5000 then you disappear on me. Mm. The exchequer will tell Esther, you have a responsibility to collect revenue through fines. Yeah. And on this day, this document show Martha was to pay 5000 yeah. Martha has not paid. What have you done? Mm. And mother goes muteja on me. Sure. <laughs> I they guess then it's a systemic thing. So, yes. It's so a system it's, issue. It's a system yes. issue. Yeah. And uh, we are really working with uh, all the stakeholders, including service providers like Safaricom M uh, for MPESA and even Airtel mm. and uh, NTSA registrar or persons such that we have your details on our palm right because if in another country for example you got a ticket it doesn't matter where you go it's going to yeah. show up in the system yes. and you can't really run away from it and actually we are inter we, we are working on that system even to interlink mm. with kenya revenue mm. such that if you don't pay the fine you'll never it, renew your license and it reflects yes. that you have care reflects that actually you owe somebody somewhere mm. Mm. you need to go and clear with them mm. But is this then not a problem that will not be resolved through what we're discussing here, but rather considering that at the earliest possible time, our judicial system teaches our citizens some of these things. I do not know what sort of communication budget the judiciary has, but imagine a situation where 
the things we are talking about here are taught. It's a favorite topic of mine, by the way. At primary level, mm -hmm. secondary level, and it's one of those compulsory courses at the university, or in a tertiary college, meaning you can't say you don't know because you are constantly being informed about it. So you are aware. But in our case, this thing hits you when you're an adult. Yes. <laughs> and you're never really sure w which is which because one, we're afraid of the police. So the policeman stops you. Half the time, you're not even sure what it is you've been stopped for, but you are afraid. <laughs> because you don't know. Yes, so, mm. so your immediate thought is to get out of this inconvenience. Mm. So if a shortcut suggestion is hinted at, you're more likely to take it. Mm -hmm. Whereas if the law is taught or people are introduced, just the basics, you then understand not only why the law is there, but the benefits of it. Because these yes. things have benefits. Yes. They, they're not just there to make your life difficult. Mm -hmm. These laws exist because there's some good to be derived. But half the time if you tell me, I know why it is good for my car to be clean. I also know why I should have a seatbelt. Seat but I think we, we have a role as judiciary and uh, as stakeholders to create awareness and road safety. Because at the end of the day, if you are driving a vehicle without insurance and uh, it happens that you are involved in a road traffic accident mm. and some, somebody by bad luck lose their life, and the, the traffic court will handle the traffic, mm. the <coughs> negligence and the recklessness, your recklessness. But this person will still go to civil court to seek compensation for their material damage, yeah. for their death, and war unto you that you do not have insurance and a judgment is now passed on you to compensate this person with two million and you have nothing. Hmm. I, I fully concur with the, with the suggestion of um, edu civic education, mm -hmm. educating the members of um, public, because sometimes we face a situation where you look at it and you're telling yourself if this person had known, because you're here because you don't have insurance. How much does it cost to get a third party insurance? And how much is the fine you're going to pay? Which now you've pleaded guilty yeah. and you must pay. Yeah. But and still get and the still insurance. get that insurance. Mm -hmm. So would you have would if this person knew, would they have gone for the insurance with these seven thousand shillings and gotten their third party insurance and made their life as in protected themselves and other people with yeah. that insurance? Yeah. Or now pay the Stay that the fine, yeah, and still go back because if you go back to the road and you still don't have it, you still be arrested. Then mm -hmm. I had the other day uh, somebody came to my court and told me a truck driver, Mimi mm. Nilipigo a fine bungoma nililipa. Tena so I was not sure why you're telling me Alipigo a fine bungoma nilishikwa na nikalipa. So why are you where, where, why where am I arrested, arrested again? again? Mm. Yet I was already arrested for this offense and I already paid fine. So I told him, okay, this truck you are coming from Uganda is you arrested in Bungoma. Mm -hmm. You didn't have um, he was charged for having uh, failing to maintain parts and equipments of the vehicle. Yes. Okay. Yes, the, the the seats were not in good condition. Okay. Yes. Mm -hmm. So he paid his fine in Bungoma court. But he still did not make good the offense. So when he came to Nairobi, he was arrested again and charged with the same offense. And I told him, by the way, if you move on to Mariakani with the same condition, mm. they will still arrest you in Mariakani and you will still go to Mariakani court and pay. So if this person knew better, they would deal with the situation instead of now paying a second. Because I told him you have to pay fine now that you pleaded guilty. You don't have it. Again, and you Again. must go and now repair and your seat before you proceed. And now, if you, you don't proceed. repair your seat before you proceed, the next traffic officer will arrest you for but the same offense. But mm. that's unfair. That is unfair, Honorable <laughs> Nanzushi. That's unfair. <laughs> I have faced a similar case again in Tanzania. <laughs> Why does oh. this guy keep going to Tanzania? But you stop going to Tanzania. You stop Just stay here. Yeah. You go to Bungoma. <laughs> it, it, it was about, it was about a fire extinguisher. Same. Oh, you've not maintained yes. those things in that yes. vehicle. So yes. there's a fire extinguisher, but then, it unfortunately, the fire extinguisher has expired. So first traffic police officer, I have a fire extinguisher. I had not checked the expiry. They checked the expiry. They are like, Dogu, Kaka, mm -hmm. it's expired. Yes. Pay a fine. I pay a fine. The officer was very clear to me, where are you going to? Dar es Salaam. It's okay. Go all the way to Dar es Salaam. Show them this. 
show them that we've already dealt with it but make sure that you by the time when you get to the risalam you can replace the fire extinguisher that makes sense now you can imagine somewhere between Day. Namanga and Arusha, you are arrested three times for fire extinguisher. Why are you going to buy a fire extinguisher between Namanga and Arusha? Actually, like for example, you are you are <laughs> you are driving and uh, you are you have a cracked windscreen. Mm -hmm. Yes. Mm -hmm. Then uh, you don't you you are arrested like in the next roadblock. Mm -hmm. Then you are brought to court. We'll find you. Okay. Now mm -hmm. from there, actually, you, we the law assumes mm -hmm. you are supposed to. To, to, remedy your your car. Car. to remedy your car. and yes. remedy that issue immediately. Yes. yes, you are supposed to park your car. You are in who wrote this law? Come you are on. in Makino in the middle of the yeah, server. No, no, and, 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 and look, sure. look, I, I often ask this or question. have a police abstract. Uh, okay, uh, okay. Oh. I have a question uh, because <laughs> oftentimes I ask questions about when we talk about adjudication and what yes. is taken into consideration when some of these decisions are being made. Because we can talk about the law, but then we can also talk about humans and life yes. and the way it actually is. So, what is considered? Uh, I could be driving behind a truck carrying gravel and mm -hmm. a piece of gravel hits my windscreen and I'm on a long journey. I get a crack in the windscreen and I'm in the middle of nowhere. I'm supposed to park the car? Immediately. Immediately. And repair. And repair. Where? Is there Mr. Glass somewhere that I can buy from? What if I don't have the budget for it? So You're this is my question. You're supposed to go to the nearest police, police station, station and report. Okay. Actually, and get an police And get abstract. a police abstract. Uh -huh. okay. You will not be arrested if you have a police abstract. Oh. But for how long can you run along and around a with a police abstract? Okay, what's the expiry date of a police abstract? It will not expire, but it will not allow you just to we'll continue one year. driving for weeks. And yet, that if it were raining and this, uh, the, 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 you do not have a good windscreen, or you do not even have a wiper, assuming what would happen to yourself. Mm. So, uh, take caution. So, essentially, the law is actually there to protect the citizens, is what you're saying. Yes, the law is there, because you're supposed to, <laughs> to just report. You. And even you, yourself, like, uh, if a, a vehicle is bad off, mm. the motor vehicle is taken to a motor vehicle inspector. Mm. We have Likoni, we have Nairobi area, we have along thicker road there is a notice of prohibition sometimes the motorists the motor vehicle inspectors they issue a notice of prohibition mm -hmm. you are given the inspection report attached to it a notice of prohibition meaning you cannot now continue using the vehicle causing danger to yourself and to other that is like committing suicide mm -hmm. if you are driving a motor vehicle that is unroadworthy sure so even for a cracked windscreen w w you know, there is a, a specific type of vehicle that one encounters in this city. They are meant to be garbage, garbage. collecting sorting vehicles. Garbage. <laughs> Tilting on one side. You are actually surprised Tilting that it's on moving. One side. Yes. yes. <laughs> and stinking. And normally, the tires don't have no only vehicles four balls. worn out as tires, dirty no as those seats. vehicles. Yes. Actually, I had one case where somebody was arrested along Bunyala. Mm for driving a dirty vehicle that, such, that no, such vehicle. a vehicle Those, yes mm -hmm. it was arrested one of the beans that collect along a mm -hmm. and the driver was but i told him yes in our public roads not within your compound and therefore you are danger to other road users and i will penalize you why are they even Actually, allowed <laughs> that's a that's a thing yeah, you are, see the people who are supposed to be doing the job that they ought to be doing when they don't do their job yes. and i'm brought yes. before you who should be penalized let me give you an example um steven is asking this question mm -hmm. i'm brought before a court mm -hmm. and accused of speeding but there were no speed limit signs on the road can i use that as my defense but, uh, in our, uh, in our, when you go for driving no. school <laughs> all the roads in kenya yeah they have a speed limit of 100 yes but along the super highway and the expressway 110 it is 110 yes and if you go to build up area it just slow 50. down to 50. even in yes. your driving school yes. now in your driving school yes. yes must you be reminded every time that now is a build up area. <laughs> must you be i must know yes i must be made aware where the build-up area begins and where it ends should in i not be made aware because yes it's uh, the whole place a build-up area where, for example, on Mombasa Road, yes. does the speed limit of 50 begin? Where does it end? 
built up area these little shopping centers you come across exactly. where does it begin all, all the way where does it end see you see them you see the buildings Actually, like, like, that's, like a, in Nairobi, that's the thing that many people will say like that in Nairobi from I assume that yeah. because the built up area is here this is where uh, it begins I mean Naivasha Road but, but, but uh, your honor you know <laughs> use the expressway if you want to run Fika Road is all built up so you know I, I use the expressway yes. actually yesterday had a funny case where this yeah. somebody is arguing that i well my client rammed onto the rear of another vehicle along mombasa road at bellevue right in the morning mm. right and actually it's a military car and the military were arguing that uh, we were not speeding <laughs> then the traffic officer said which is the law and people don't know you are supposed to maintain 70, 70. meters from one vehicle to another 70 70 meters in nairobi it doesn't happen because if you maintain 70. actually that is the law that is the law <laughs> whether in nairobi whether in it's mashenani whether so, you so are where in the estate if it I'm is here, 70 meters the next vehicle should be at mlolongo <laughs> 70 <laughs> okay 70 me, not kilometers <laughs> meters not not kilometers meters so when you are when you are driving here the next car should be at the car park uh, such that when you are when 70 meters where where kenya that's what the law says that is what the law says and therefore that is why even then if it has not I, been I was, revealed it has not been amended like i was driving then i just decided to cut uh, uh, just to kanyanga break break chuk. Everybody has committed an offense because Everybody. it should have been 70 meters behind us. Yes. I'm telling you. Yes. Yeah. So this system, your honors, is designed to be extractive and punitive. How much money do the traffic courts collect on behalf of the government? We collect a lot of revenue. Yeah. Mm. And of it course. is, it is. Really, I, I, I think, oh, of course. Yeah. I think sometimes <laughs> Kenyans. Uh, I have to On some no. days we I, go I, and we, we 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 have collected about two million three. Million. Like on a day That's when me. people are arrested along Rangata Road for driving so under influence. Kuna operation. And everybody pays a fine of fifty, fifty. 50 70, there are twenty 80. people or seventy. Or you come, uh, Mr. Latif, your vehicle does not have. Um, has a tint you put their blinker lights then you change the color of the vehicle the you your seats are not maintained you know you come like 12 let's imagine you have to be 12 12 offenses. Yes. 12 offenses. you want to explain this tint thing to me and explain to me the bull bar thing to me the I, bull bar, I, I, I don't, I don't understand. blinking lights it, the blinking lights i get your car can't be a disco that one i've gotten <laughs> i've understood but this Tints. tint what is the benefit to me not having a tint a car, should, the offense. What is the a offense? car should be very clear such that any other offense cannot be committed your, your car can be a scene of crime, crime. yes and yes. therefore it should be very clear that when you're driving along the way you are seeing what's happening outside there mm. everybody is supposed to know what is happening in your car that's the law that is the law that is why that is the essence of okay. having clear glasses and especially the, public service especially public Espe service. the way we wait, 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 yeah. wait, wait so there's a proviso for Perhaps, maybe. And my, my own, okay, now Public my own private car? No, private cars are not charged for having the tint. Really? And the police know this? No. They, they, they you know what happens? <laughs> let, let me tell you how the police come in. Mm. Most of the Uber vehicles are public service yeah. vehicles. Mm -hmm. okay. And they have the tint. Mm -hmm. So that is how the police come in. So most of the time, the police arrest these people. Then they say, this is a private car in Igariangu. But it's a PSV, it's an Uber, so it's supposed to have clear okay. windows. Yeah. And how do, we, how do we determine this Prado is a PSV? V. Because your insurance, your insurance you have told your insurance, yeah. I want to insure this vehicle cool. to perform from public, public service. Yes. yes. Oh, no. So from the insurance, from insurance we'll be able it is to a tell. Prado, we will know where when you move to a Uber and uh, you are driving a Mercedes. A, a Mercedes. Yes. But you're doing Uber. That yes. is public service. So if you want windows. to carry tourists, you should have insurance and you should declare to your insurance, I'm operating TVS, tourist vehicle. Your honors, <laughs> you'll yes. come again yes. and we'll have maybe some two hours. So you can yes. educate people and let people even, because there are very many questions, for example, on social media. Let's, yes. Let mm. us have another session, which will just be about That's awareness. Yeah. We will really appreciate. We will also appreciate you coming back. The Honorable Esther Kimilu and the Honorable Martha Nanzushi are magistrates of the Traffic Court 
Milimani, at Kilimani. Milimani. Milimani in Nairobi. We've been talking about the operations of the traffic court on this Justice Thursday. Keep it here for more conversations coming up in the next hour. This is the Situation Room, the only way to start your day.